Oh, hi there. So in my last video, I showed you my favorite lick. I got it from a saxophone player, a really good saxophone player. He was one of Arturo Sandoval's top picks for whenever he had a gig and he needed a sax player, he'd go to Zane Musa. Now he played this lick and I fell in love with it at first hearing. I was gonna say sight, but you know, here it is. <laughs> Now in the video before this, I took out that first part and just played this part pretty fast. That sounds freaking awesome. this lick for you but screw that why well, every time you you want to play the lick you gotta pull out your your, your little sheet music and like oh, oh boy <laughs> oh jolly good gonna be from man to man or woman so let me explain this lick by ear or by mouth your ear so it takes place on a concert D minor chord but specifically a Dorian sound If you're not aware of what makes the sound Dorian, it's that natural six. So if say we were to play the D major scale, it would sound like this, right? Yay! Now a D natural minor, it'd sound like this. The Dorian takes that sixth note. And it raises it up a half step. So instead of this note being flat, it's back to its natural state from the major scale. Or it's just D to D in the key of C major. So what usually helps me hear a chord is if I play the one, three, five, seven, and then the extensions. So check me out. Do it on saxophone. For an alto sax player, this will be our B minor. So let's play a B minor seven, and let's play the extensions in the Dorian mode. Now remember, we're gonna raise that six back up a half step. I like to play it up an octave too. So let's explain what's going on in that lick. It takes place over this chord. So that part, the first part, we're playing a B and we go up a minor third. Then we go down to the ninth. And then we play the leading tone under the B, which is the A sharp. 
and then we play the B again. So we started on the B, and then we did this circle, and we landed right back on the B. So what just happened here was an enclosure. So B, and then an enclosure around that B. So nothing is outside of the scale yet, except that leading tone under the B. Now, what we're gonna do is play another leading tone under the fifth, and then play the fifth. Now, we're gonna go up to the seventh, the minor seventh, and then we're gonna go down and land on that 13, that six, that Dorian six, that Dorian 13. Pretty freaking awesome. Now right here. That right there is literally an E, R-E, concert G, arpeggio, starting on the third of that triad. So let's recap. Amazing! Wow! Oh my god! This next note is a little funky. Now that note is a risky little note. Check this out. See, it doesn't sound pleasing to the ear, but why it works is that he's using this as an approach tone to the note after it, because the note after it lands on a strong beat. Watch this, I'm gonna keep pulse with my body, and you're gonna see that I'm gonna land away from the and land right on the strong note, which is the minor third of this chord. This is a great note to land on, on a strong beat. Oh my God. Ready, go. That, you see? Uh, I landed on that minor third right there. So if we play that with the harmony. That note doesn't bother you. It actually sounds pretty cool because it serves a purpose. It serves as an approach and it's less predictable because you're kind of outside of the harmony. But it's totally normal in jazz to use these chromatic approaches and passing tones and all these things. Oh my god, just jazz. So after that, that is an enclosure around the fifth note of the B minor chord or concert D minor chord. So we start on that flatted 13 this time. So it's not the door yet. What is my hairline? Oh my god, I'm gonna be bald. I'm gonna be a bald man. So we start on that flatted 13 this time. But it's for the sake of the enclosure, all right? This is not the main point of this little section. It's not that flat 13, so don't stress about it too much, okay? Don't. What we're worried about is that fifth. That's the point of this little enclosure. That's the person getting all the attention. See, it makes sense. The flat 13 doesn't bother you, even though if I were to play the flat 13, clashed against a Dorian sound. That bothered you, but... That didn't bother you, but I played that flat 13. Why didn't it bother you that time? Because your focal point was somewhere else musically. So. So like I said, we start on that flat 13 and then we go down to the 11. And then chromatic our way up to that fifth. It is a leading tone to the fifth. And then after that, I love that part. It sounds freaking awesome. That pretty much encircles the minor third. 
So watch this. Say this is the minor third, all right? It's a nice, long enclosure. Fifth, flat seven, one, 11, nine, mm! It landed right in there. In a little bit fast motion, it does this. Once we land on that, we just arpeggiate up our way till we land on that 11. So let's hear that with the chord. he lands on that note he just goes back down the arpeggio and once he lands on the fifth he goes to the one five one so let's do that in slow motion That was Zane Moose's version. At the end, I just I, I took that out. I mean, it really doesn't matter. That sounds cooler, honestly. You know, so I, I, I'd recommend you do that. So let's do it a bit faster now. Now, when you play really fast, it can be hard to put the articulation in there. But I try to get it in there just because it just feels good and it sounds cool. So, if you go so fast and your articulation is just not holding up quite yet, it sounds like this. Don't feel ashamed, okay? Because. You know, mine's not that fast either compared to like those super pros. <laughs> so if you slur it, it sounds like this. It still sounds pretty good to me, but I like to tongue it just because. Just adds that extra spice. Oh my god, spice! Wow! Alright, thanks for watching my video. It is 4 a.m. That's why I'm kind of crazy right now. Because I'm I'm trying to go to bed. Luckily I have a basement, so I don't bother anyone that's asleep when I'm playing. But this room is a little spooky. Um, I got the this little green screen back here to hide the spook from you guys. Alright, anyway, subscribe!